Copy. We see it. Prepare to deploy the probe. Affirmative. Moonfall is another crazy sci-fi epic written and directed by Roland Emmerich, the king of disaster films, and the mind behind Independence Day, Stargate, The Day After Tomorrow, 2012, and Universal Soldier. He also made the 1998 Zilla and Independence Day Resurgence, which themselves are disastrous disaster films. And it's Find Gojira, it. you moron! A uh, moon is not like a natural object. That was a great idea for a movie. And I kind of thought, well, what happens if this object would fall down to Earth? Word that Emmerich would be writing and directing a new sci-fi epic was first announced in May of 2019. With a $140 million budget that was independently sourced, it is one of the most expensive independent films ever produced. Moonfall was originally a universal property, but fearing that he wouldn't have as much control, he purchased the rights back, and along with business partner Harold Closer, went to the Cannes Film Festival to get financial backers. This enabled him to essentially get creative control and a substantial share of the film. The story is loosely inspired by Christopher Knight and Alan Butler's novel Who Built the Moon, discussing the Hollow Moon Hypothesis, a conspiracy theory about the moon being an artificial construction. The idea of this film is naturally very, very fantastic, and you want to kind of give it a lot of believability, and the believability comes from science. With the car secured in mid-2020, filming began in Montreal in October and lasted 61 days. Due to the illness that shall not be named, the film had to speed up its principal photography while also having to contend with a restriction on location shoots. Because of this, over 135 sets were constructed, built primarily on six stages at Grande Studios, while a museum in Florida actually lent their original space shuttle cockpit, and NASA would provide on-set advice about their equipment. The scenes in the shuttle, they've been a challenge to film, really. You have to rely so heavily on your own imagination to, to pull those kind of scenes off. You kind of don't know what to expect, so that's what's kind of cool. You get surprised and I'm sure it's gonna look great. Over 1700 visual effects shots were completed for Moonfall by Scanline VFX, Pixamondo, DNEG and Framestore in a massive collaborative effort to bring the ridiculous visuals to the screen. He knows this space, he's not afraid of the scope of a movie, no set or piece is too big, he rolls with it. That's actually when he gets really 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 into it. On a routine satellite repair mission in 2011, Brian Harper, played by Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry's Jacinda Fowler, and co-astronaut Marcus are suddenly attacked by a shape-shifting metal swarm that kills Marcus and knocks Fowler unconscious, leaving Harper to stop their ship from spinning out of control and get them home safely. Harper is initially praised as a hero until he recounts what he saw. With Fowler failing to defend him during the 18-month-long investigation, human error is blamed for the incident, his account is ridiculed, and he's ultimately fired from NASA. Not only does no one believe him, but at his lowest point, even his wife and son lose faith in him and move on. Harper's legal options have been exhausted, and it's become clear that the accident was the result of human error. Ten years later, conspiracy theorist Casey Hausman, who believes the moon is an artificial megastructure, uses a research telescope to discover that the moon's orbit is veering closer to the Earth. Around the same time, NASA locate the anomaly and mount a mission to investigate, but the same entity that attacked Harper's mission reappears, killing the entire crew after they launch a probe. Everything we thought we knew about the nature of the universe has just gone out the window. As the moon's orbit continues to wane, it causes cataclysmic disasters on Earth from massive tsunamis, gravitational abnormalities, to atmospheric dissipation, making the surface of the Earth increasingly hostile. Fowler, now the deputy director of NASA, learns that Apollo 11 had actually discovered the moon resonated strongly when they approached, suggesting a hollow interior, but it was all covered up. Discovering the existence of a prototype EMP weapon that could potentially neutralize the threat, Fowler gathers up Harper with the aim of flying a retired space shuttle to deliver the payload. With a limited crew, because Fowler essentially tells everyone to go home once they ran into a problem, they and Houseman use the gravitational disturbances to launch into space right before a gigantic tsunami destroys the base. We also follow Sonny, Harper's son, who helps take Fowler's son Jimmy and their nanny Michelle to safety, along with their respective families. Approaching the moon, the team discovers that the core is in fact a megastructure, just as Casey predicted. The swarm is essentially siphoning energy generated by a white dwarf at the center of the moon, causing the megastructure's orbit to destabilize. But before the team has time to marvel at the wonders they're beholding, the entity becomes aware of their presence and attacks. Instead of crashing and burning during the chase, their controls are taken over by a mysterious force that guides them to safety. And this is where things start to get nuts. What are you? 
I'm a construct from your minds. Who made you? The same people who made you. Harper is told by a hologram of our ancestors that the moon was constructed billions of years ago in the past as an ark to repopulate humanity, which was being hunted by rogue artificial intelligence that they created. Unfortunately, only one of these arcs were finished before they were found, and with the last megastructure now under attack, humanity was all but doomed. With this, they give Harper a chance to sacrifice himself and stop the AI, but as they lure the entity towards their souped up capsule, Houseman locks himself in the rover and takes his spot, giving them enough time to get the safety before the EMP was detonated. With the power restored to the megastructure, the moon begins to return to its regular orbit, bringing an end to the destruction that Emmerich loves. The film then concludes with Houseman waking up as a hologram and the moon's operating system telling him that his consciousness has been replicated before explaining that they need to get to work, essentially setting up a sequel. I love that it took this disaster film, but really base it around one of the most interesting and controversial questions of evolution versus creation. Now, Patrick Wilson and Halle Berry are okay considering what they're given to work with, but the plot is nonsensical. The pacing and story is all over the place, and a lot of the dialogue is corny. What would Elon do? I don't want you to go. I love you more than all the stars in the sky. Even more than the whole Milky Way? Why did we need to see Casey go to work for 10 seconds at a restaurant? It doesn't add anything to the story, and it's not brought up again. Why is he even in the film? I mean, I get that he's first to make the discovery, but just as he posts his findings, NASA also finds out what's happening, making him redundant for the rest of the film. He only becomes essential because Fowler tells everyone at NASA to go home when one of the rockets fail, dooming the world to annihilation. Surely they would keep working on a solution? I mean, since when is the response to Houston, we have a problem being, screw it, let's go to the pub? I was also confused as to why they wasted Donald Sutherland in a cameo that lasted a minute. These are the kind of decisions that are present in just about every Emmerich movie. I still haven't gotten over how the cord of a power tool blocked a gear from a massive mechanical door designed to withstand an extinction level event in 2012. But I digress. Like M. Night, he has a great vision for aesthetics and creating foreboding atmosphere, but they both need a good scriptwriter on their projects to counteract their worst directorial impulses. I've also noticed a really weird trend in these movies. Emmerich loves to uncuck his main characters. A character comparison of John Cusack's Jackson Curtis, a father who's been cucked, and Wilson's Harper will reveal a little bit more. Both are divorced and their wives have remarried a more successful person, and both films have the new husband die, paving the way for the uncucking. Even Jeff Goldblum's character in Independence Day punches the president because he thinks he cucked him. You punched the president? Keep my wife's name out your f mouth! Despite the flaws and scientific inaccuracies in Moonfall, I love that he's still making risky movies that don't take themselves too seriously. And this, like every one of his disaster epics, is now a guilty pleasure. It's just nice to see a director committed to making an original, preposterous, old-fashioned blockbuster. Unfortunately, unlike his early films, Moonfall flopped at the box office, which means that we're less likely to get directors and studios taking risks like this, and more likely to see unnecessary reboots and sequels that tarnish the original properties that we love. But with that said, of course, I'd love to hear what you guys thought about this movie and Roland Emmerich's filmography in general, so please share that below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Approaching me. Hey, buddy, it's your dad. Dad? You need to find shelter immediately. We're launching a counterattack large parts of the moon. It will rain down on us. There will be radiation.